Hey guys, welcome to the last day of Hollow Week. Today I'm going to be carving a jack-o'-lantern while I answer your questions. Obviously, not in this getup, so let me get changed and we'll go outside. <sighs> Alright, so if you've been following me on social media or on the community tab, you probably know that the city I live in, New Orleans, was hit by a strong category 2 hurricane. So we lost power and we're not going to have power for a couple days probably. We're on day two now so we're waiting for the power to come on. Around the block there's a downed power pole so that's probably the source of our no power. Thankfully we borrowed a generator from my husband's friend that is powering our refrigerator so thankfully we didn't lose too much of that stuff <sighs> but man that was intense. This video, I'm sorry that it is delayed, it's going out late. Anyway, I have these three pumpkins here, and I'm going to carve one of them. Um, I kind of got them because I thought it was like, one is like my husband, one is me, and then one is my little Penelope. She's far too young to be carving her own pumpkin, uh, so I'm going to be doing it for her. If she was a little older, I'd probably let her paint it, but she'd probably just dip her hand in the paint and try to eat it right now. So we're not doing that this year. Anyway, I'm going to carve this while trying to answer your guys' questions. First, I'm going to take the seeds out of here. I have a bowl to save the seeds because they're really nice to roast up and then you have like delicious pumpkin seeds. I've made a video on how to do those. I can't make them right now because we don't have power and I have an electric oven. So I'm just going to save them, wash them, get them ready to go, put them in the fridge and then hope that our power comes back before those sprout. I wanted to try out a technique where you cut it from the bottom. Um, Supposedly it's easier to get the seeds out because a lot of the membrane like connects to the bottom, I guess I don't know and then you can just get rid of The bottom piece and then just like stick your pumpkin over your candle However, I read that if you use a real candle with a flame You're supposed to cut like a little hole in the top somewhere so that the heat can escape I'm gonna be using one of these lights. It's a little battery powered light. It doesn't produce any heat So I don't need to worry about that I have a bag ready to go for my trash right here Put my sleeves up. I have a camera so that you guys can see this angle. Uh oh, I think I'm cutting too close to the bottom. <sighs> I should have had a cutting board. I'll go grab one of those real quick. There we go. I'm gonna get stuff everywhere anyway, but this will make it a little bit easier to clean, I guess. Here we go. Oh yeah. Wow, look at that. Ta-da! Oh shit. Okay. <sighs> now here's the fun part where you get your hands dirty. I guess I'm gonna get paper towels. Okay, let this scrape down. Oh no! I've seen people take mixers from a handheld mixer. You put it on a drill and kind of like spin it around in the pumpkin. I would be trying that today if I had a handheld mixer, but I only have my standing mixer so that won't work unfortunately okay so first question it's so great to see your face but I was wondering how you deal with creative anxiety how do I deal with creative anxiety um not very well <laughs> oh gosh what do I do I suffer from creative anxiety a lot I like to follow a lot of creative people. For me, this is helpful to see their work and to see the stuff that they're producing and typically it inspires me to try to do stuff myself. I know that's not the right thing for everybody, but that's how I do it. 
sometimes for me with creative anxiety, I'm I'm a perfectionist. If it's not turning out well, then I get really frustrated and I like give up on a project. But the best thing to do, and this is like way easier said than done because I still am really bad at it. The best thing to do is to like just force yourself to create. Even if it turns out bad, just you needed to get that out of your brain and hopefully your next project will be better. I'm really bad at this. Like I said, I'm a perfectionist, so if it's not turning out well, I just give up on it. So I think that's kind of hard for a lot of people to do. If anyone else has their own ways to deal with creative anxiety, please leave them down below. Um, I know everybody's process is different, so it'd be kind of cool to see what everybody else does. Tell us about how you make your coffee. I don't think that I really make like the best coffee. I want to learn how to do it better. But late last month, I did a clay and place class and we made our own coffee mugs with a little funnel to make pour over coffee. Let me go get that real quick. So I made this mug and then this funnel to go on top so that I can make pour over coffee. I have a little handheld coffee grinder. I have whole coffee beans. We actually have like a sample pack of a bunch of stuff so I've been working through those so I don't really have like a favorite coffee yet. I do like three or four tablespoons of beans and then put them into my little funnel. I heat up some water with my kettle and then I pour it on slowly around um, and then let it steep until it's done and then I have coffee. I like sugar and cream in it. I'm trying to cut back on the sugar but I can't help it. I need it so. Pregnancy journey. Oh man. Pregnancy journey. Pregnancy journey. So we were really lucky that when we decided that we wanted to try having a kid, um, it only took one try, which is pretty lucky. A lot of... Alright, well, you could probably hear we have a crying baby, so I have to shut everything down and go tend to her really quick. Hopefully it doesn't take too long because we don't have that much light to work with, so... I'll be right back. How fitting that Penelope interrupted this while I was answering a question about her. Um, anyway, my pregnancy journey. So, yeah, we decided after coming back home from the holidays last year to start trying for a kid. And we decided to wait until after Mardi Gras because I was riding that year and I didn't want to have to not ride, I guess. I already paid all my dues and everything. I wanted to experience Mardi Gras one last time as a non-parent. <laughs> I pretty much had a chill, easy pregnancy. Um, I kind of really enjoyed it. The whole first trimester, I had morning sickness, but it was like nausea all day. I never actually threw up. But yeah, the rest of the time, I mean, I had like aches and pains and stuff towards the end, but generally, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I'm not really like a kid person. Of course I love my kid, but I am very like awkward and weird around other people's kids. I never really knew how to like interact with them. So I just kind of assumed that pregnancy was just gonna be this thing that I had to get through in order to have a kid, but I really liked it. So, and now I have a cute little baby girl and she's outside playing with her dad right now. It's pretty great. Let me tell you, having a little baby to focus on this whole year has been a lifesaver. She is totally oblivious to what the heck has been going on in the world and it's just really fun to be able to see her grow and experience stuff for the first time. So that's been really nice. <laughs> Craft mediums or skills that you want to try in the near future. I really, okay I should probably start carving this. I really want to do some weaving. My mother-in-law bought me a weaving class from an artist, Ali Rousseau. I'll leave a link to her Instagram or her website or the class that I took down below. It's just like an online video class. I mean, I took it because I'm interested in weaving. Ooh. Oh, well, that went down to the floor. Yeah, I want to do that so badly. I'm hoping that I can finally do something like that pretty soon. 
since I'm back here now, I'll probably make a video about it. Have you created anything since being home with your daughter that you might want to show us? Yeah, um, well I have that mug and funnel set that I showed you guys. That's probably one of my most favorite things that I've done since then. I've made a lot of masks. That's not really like super exciting, but I've made a bunch of those. I've been working with my friend who is a fabric designer here in town, um, doing a bunch of designs for her. I did that last year and I'm doing that again this year. Um, I'll leave a link below to her store so you guys can go check out her stuff. But doing the fabric designs has been really fun. I've been really enjoying it. I'm sure there's a lot more stuff that I can't even think about right now. So I'll put a bunch of pictures of what I've done here. <laughs> But some of the things are stuff that I've been recording, so I'll eventually have a video, hopefully. Did you pick up any new crafts or other hobbies? New crafts? No. Uh, I started crocheting a lot more again, but I've that's probably one of the first crafts that I ever started doing, so I wouldn't say that's new. But yeah, I haven't really done anything new, but I hope to soon. What project are you most proud of? Right now, I am most proud of our outdoor furniture set that we built, my husband and I built. Um, he helped me build one of the like sofas or whatever, and then I built the other half of it. Getting my hands on power tools again, and then building a nice sitting area and coffee table kind of thing for us to sit around and hang out at outside has been really nice. And I am gonna be doing a video of that I have a bunch of stuff recorded, I just need to edit it. Are you going to include Penny in some of your videos? I mean, I already kind of did in the beginning of this Hollow Week. She was kind of in the end slate. I go back and forth on if I want to feature her more on this channel. I probably will if I do some kind of craft that is baby related. Yeah, I'm sure she'll make a cameo every once in a while, but I don't really want to overload people who don't want to see baby stuff uh, with babies. But then again, it's my channel and I usually do a lot of stuff that pertains to my life. So she's gonna show up anyway. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess I was gonna just try to see about how it goes kind of naturally. You know, the cats and Hobbs show up periodically in my videos. So it'll probably be the same with Penny. What is something you wanted to make slash buy but is impractical and unnecessary? Well, that's a hard one for me because once I decide that I want to make something, I get really stubborn and I make it. I guess going back to clay, I really been wanting to get back into that, but um, wheels are expensive, kilns are expensive. A lot of studios aren't doing studio time right now because of COVID stuff. At least they're not accepting like new people. And also it's kind of hard for me to get out of the house and do that for extended periods of time because I have a baby to take care of. So ideally I would be able to work on that stuff here at home on my own time, but we don't have a kiln. so. That's kind of the end of that, and those things are quite expensive. What projects are you looking forward to doing, whether it's for the channel, for yourself, or others? So we just built some outdoor furniture for our outdoor space. Um, and right now, our outdoor space is just on our driveway. It's nothing special, but eventually we want to build a deck in our backyard. So that's something that I'm pretty excited about for the future. I don't believe we're going to build it ourselves. I don't really feel comfortable building something to that magnitude. But we have family and or friends who are willing to come help. And if that happens, then I definitely would be out there helping. I'd love to learn, you know, how to do some of that stuff. So I would be out there helping. Oops. I have been redoing my craft room and we're making it into a kind of guest room as well. So I've been doing a bunch of stuff in there and I'm really excited about how that's turning out. That's also going to be another video. So you guys will see what I'm talking about sometime. <laughs> I don't know about soon, but sometime, eventually, hopefully. Where did you get your glasses? They're so cute. Um, I can't remember exactly where I got these ones. It was, it's one of those like cheap websites where you can get glasses. If I remember, oh, I will link them down below. 
but yeah. I need to get some new ones because my prescription is real bad. Question on the clay, this is actually about my incense burner. You mentioned it's air dry clay, does it crack? After drying, asking because mine, I used Crayola and it cracked. The clay that I was using doesn't seem to crack too badly. Well, or at all. I didn't have any cracking issues. Um, I'm sure if you made it really thick, then it could possibly crack. Um, I did have an issue where the two pieces separated after I attached them together, but that's just because I didn't do that great of a job of like slipping and scoring and attaching them in that way. But I've never had a problem with the clay that I used, the air drying clay that I used. So, uh, did you make your hat? This one? I need one, please let me know. I did not make this, unfortunately. I'll leave a link down below to where I got mine. Do you happen to sell your art? I do sell my artwork. I have a Society6 website that I desperately need to update with more artwork. I plan on doing that pretty soon. So keep your eyes peeled. I will announce it on my social media whenever I end up doing that. So follow me on Instagram. That's typically where I would be posting that kind of update. Would you be interested in doing which astrology inspired craft? I think so. I love doing all different kinds of crafts. I'd be down to do something like that. Is there anything specifically that you had in mind? Okay, I didn't really do that great of a job of cleaning this pumpkin out. I hate cleaning pumpkins out. <laughs> so it's quite stringy and gross in here. Baby is adorable. Yes, she is. What's your all-time favorite DIY? All-time favorite DIY. Well, I was just talking to my husband about um, my most useful DIY. And I don't even think about it anymore because we use it like every day. But the key fob holder that I made for my key fob that broke, we, you know, when we're driving, we use that. So it's super useful that that holds it onto our keychain now. <laughs> but all time favorite DIY. Hmm. I mean, right now, it's our outdoor furniture set because we've been using that so much and it's so nice to have like a nice place to sit outside so i guess there's that okay i have some acetone i'm gonna use to clean up the face how do you find inspiration after becoming a mom i mean it's tough right like you're constantly taking care of a little baby i've definitely I found it easier to kind of find inspiration, do my own thing, like once Penny started becoming more, I don't want to say independent, she's a freaking baby, but like she can play on her own and I don't have to like constantly be holding her or whatever, you know, like she kind of can do her own thing. So that gives me time that I can, you know, draw or read or whatever. Also, getting her to sleep through the night has been really helpful because it's not like I'm constantly on edge that I'm going to have to tend to a crying baby. I mean, it's still tough to actually find the time to do stuff. Once we started getting into a better, like, structured day, I was able to set aside time for myself to be like, okay, now I'm going to be trying to do this thing or that, that thing or whatever. So, I don't know. That's how it's been for me. What is your natal chart? What are your sun, moon, and rising astrological signs? I have no idea. So let's go check it out. Um, oh, I don't have internet. I was about to try to use my computer. Let's see, how do you do it on my phone? Oh gosh, I don't remember what time I was born. Oh, unknown time, okay. All right, it is calculating my natal chart right now. <sighs> this is kind of tough because um, our internet is really shitty because we don't have power over here. Oh my goodness, okay. Sun, moon, and rising astrological sign, sun. So if I'm reading this right, my sun sign is Virgo, moon is Leo, and rising astrological, I don't, no, um, oh, 
I don't have a time of birth, or I don't, I don't have one. I don't know my time of birth, so uh, we can't see what my rising sign is, I guess. Um, if I figure it out, then I'll leave it on the screen, but yeah. Are you planning on having another baby soon, mom? And then my mother-in-law, you guys. Um, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, no promises, but maybe. Um, is that it? Is that really going to be the last one that I end on? Wow. Alright. <laughs> well, there we go. Here is my pumpkin that I made. Ooh, wow. So spooky. I hope you guys liked this Q&A. Sorry about the format of it. Like, no light and kind of low energy for me, unfortunately. I mean, I just experienced a pretty decent hurricane um, and we have no power so yeah it's been an experience yeah I hope you guys liked the video anyway um, stay tuned for future videos and now to the outro thanks so much for checking out my hollow week videos this year I had a lot of fun it was really good to get back into this I missed it so thank you again Becca for asking me about it and planting that seed and getting me to start making my videos again I have missed you guys like I mentioned in my announcement video that I was gonna be doing hollow week that I posted last week I am going to start doing videos I think every other week starting now I guess I'm gonna skip next week and then do next next week so yeah I'm gonna try to be better at posting in the community tab about what my schedule will be so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed thank you so much for checking out my video so yeah I'll see you guys in a couple weeks